what I'm saying it's important that we all try to play a, 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 low, a, a role of leadership also within the UN. It's great to see all my colleagues who have been running dialogues and and um, uh, conversations and working with the PJ on very different important topics. So I think we also have to make ourselves you know, more and more active in, in that sense as well. So, um, but I also think that we are probably more sensitive, and I don't mean it in a negative way. It's not bad that we are sensitive. And we have got compassion, and we look at each other's eyes, and we ask each other, how are you? Not only because of saying hello, but because we really mean it, and we need, and we give time to listen what is really going on in the heart or in the mind of our colleague. This is very important, and that's also a great example. And here I remember the moment during these mad days of the General Assembly High Level Week when we bumped into each other with the Ambassador of Dominica. And I asked her, so how are you? She said, I don't know, you know, we doesn't exist anymore. I can't have any contact with my family. I don't have a house, a roof. And you see, we don't think about it. We are thinking on ourselves all the time and running, 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 and doing our work. So I just thought that would be a, an important opportunity for us also to listen. Uh, because we've seen pictures, we heard, but we probably didn't hear it. We, we, didn't, we, we haven't been touched personally by that. So uh, would you like to come just to, sh to share just a few words? Uh, and we will also have a little film after that. Just. Thank you very much, Ambassador Kathleen. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I would like to recognize the presence of our Deputy SG and distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon. Um, first of all, thank you for the opportunity to speak with fellow women ambassador. I am Ambassador Lauren Vanis Roberts and I'm from the Commonwealth of Dominica. I always say the Commonwealth of Dominica when I get the opportunity because sometimes people confuse us with the Dominican Republic. <laughs> we are located smack between the French Department of Guadeloupe and Martinique. We speak English and Creole and we are a country of 70,000 people. I think Hurricane Maria has erased the confusion in terms of the um, the island. So it's the Dominican Republic and the Commonwealth of Dominica. Um, so that's who we are. We are the nature island of the Caribbean. We promote ecotourism. We are clean and green with 365 rivers. Um, Dominica is not the typical Caribbean island, sun, sand, and sea. It's all about nature, eco, friendly people, um, whale watching, hiking, river tubing. But on September 18, 2017, Hurricane Maria visited us and left a trail of complete destruction. What you see in the media and the reality on the ground, it's just night and day. 90% um, of our homes have been destroyed, 90%. Um, our hospitals and clinics damaged, our buildings left roofless, our schools have literally disappeared beneath the rubble, um, our road infrastructure destroyed, some communities are simply unrecognizable, um, our schools gone, um, crops uprooted, water pipes smashed, our communication and electricity is completely out, as we speak, I've not spoken to my father, I've not spoken to any one of my brothers. Um, I know my home is destroyed because I saw it through the images from the helicopters, but I plan on going back on the 20th. I need to be in these forums where I can get the message across that Dominica needs you at this time. Um, I'm so pleased for this opportunity today because women understand, we see things differently. Um, for me, it's a heavy challenge because before coming here as the UN ambassador, I served as an elected member of parliament. So I literally had a constituency as a parliamentarian. And I can tell you the messages and the images I get from women in the constituency, especially the single moms. 
they think I'm out there, they believe in me, and they expect me to come with some hope, something to live for the next day. But as we speak, um, help is coming in in terms of the UN, our CARICOM partners, our friendly government, my sister here has literally called me and made a contribution. This is Qatar, um, the governments of Trinidad and Tobago, Cuba, Venezuela, China. But Dominica is in a unique position in that we are an independent nation. Yes, many other countries were affected, but they have a mother country. We do not. Mm. So in the case of the BVI and Tortola and St. Thomas and Puerto Rico, yeah. there's the French, the Dutch, the British, but we are on our own. So persons literally stretch out their hands because of humanity. So that is why no help is too big or too small. Every sector has been affected in Dominica. Um, some communities, as we speak, you can only access these communities by helicopter. Um, in terms of fatalities, last week we had 27 confirmed dead, 27 missing, and 18 on the county port, but the number has increased. In fact, as of yesterday, there was um, somebody missing in my community and they discovered his body in the ocean. He was the gentleman who rang our bell in the Catholic Church. So these are people I know. I know of those homes. I've been to these homes. I've literally interacted with them. I also served as the, the president of the Dominican Netball Association. So even from that fraternity, they expect me to do something or say something on their behalf. And just this morning, I received a message from the president of the Dominican Netball Association. It says, Madam Ambassador, how are you keeping and hope you are keeping well amidst our predicament? And she says, many, if not all of our netballers have lost their homes or belongings. Is there anything you can do for them? What am I supposed to respond? So the expectations are great, and I know being here at the UN, I can rely on you, whatever it is, even if it's just to get the word out to your capital, that we need help and we need it now. Fortunately for us, um, our Prime Minister was here two Saturdays ago and he made a passionate plea to the international community. And as we speak, Secretary General will be in Dominica on Sunday. So we expect with the media that he's traveling with, the word will get out. Um, we expect the cost to be in the billions of dollars because every single community has been affected. The eye of Hurricane Maria went right through Dominica. It happened at night and it was at 165 miles per hour. We are still blessed that not more people, you know, succumb to the effects because they, there was no way to run. Um, climate change is here, it is real. We never thought as a country with 365 rivers that Dominica would um, suffer from flooding and that is a major concern for us. Most of the people who disappeared were literally washed out at sea and um, that's what it is. I came here just to bring that message but we have to remain strong because there are women waiting on us. We can't break down. We are the beacon of hope for them. So any assistance that you can provide is fine. I'm sorry I did not, not that I did not, I changed my background, my card stayed in there. So I'm going to literally give you my number. I'm on WhatsApp and I need you to have it. Call me anytime, night or day, I, I, I don't sleep. Um, even when I leave here, there's a benefit concert in Jamaica, Queens that I have to attend and from tomorrow I go to the um, receiving shelter to literally pack and ship stuff to Dominica. So my number is 646. If there is one time that the women ambassadors can do something tangible for our less fortunate in a small island developing state, the time is now. So thank you very much and um, I look forward to hearing from you. I thank you for the courtesy of your attention and I thank you for the opportunity 
to just have this brief uh, moment with you. Let's stay strong. There are people who are in the world. Thank you very much, Ambassador. I, I remember so vividly, um, Hungary is now in the Human Rights Council, but when we were campaigning, I went to talk to the uh, small island states, and then they told me, for us, human rights, for us, human rights is the right for existence. And this is what we are here talking about. Um, I asked my colleague to show a very, just a very two, two minutes film about how beautiful it was and what happened to the island. community, for example, it's like 98% of the homes is sourced from this. The rural areas are more severely affected. Um, the photos of around the city, but our rural communities are three times as bad. They're literally running through the villages as we speak in the stadium maybe. Trying to get some tents erected so some of our students, especially those in the upper forms, can go to Islands have opened their doors to accepting some of our students, Bahamas, Trinidad, Barbados. So it's a tough situation. We need food, we need clothes, we need building material. Dominica. Um, was an island with 70% forest reserves and the forest is now gone. Yeah. All the trees are ocean front or in the waterways. That's right. Um, Paho, all of our vaccines were replaced yesterday. Paho uh, issued that report. And the um, electricity is gone. The, Water purification tablets have begun arriving. This is a bridge in the city. So all of our forest is now through. It is as serious. This is the Prime Minister. Complete shock. So, dear colleagues, we can do so much together. That's why we are here. That's, uh, I'm welcoming the, the new ones who arrived since the beginning of the lunch.